All right, there was a lot coming to you. Ooh, it's from Southern California. Today is, whoa, end of May here. What, one more day left? May 29th, 2014, just after 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Be a beautiful, oh, Thursday afternoon here. Love to be, I <laughs> love to be alive. Just listening to some Christmas carols. Can you believe it? Oh, why wait till December to thank you, Jesus, right? <laughs> Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I know he probably wasn't most likely 99.9% uh, born in December, but, uh-oh, the fact of the matter is he was born. Hallelujah! Ha the, the devil hates that, right? The devil, uh, oh, my cat goes, hey, man, my cat loves when I st start doing the program here every day because he knows I'm going to open up the windows wide and the birds are going to be chirping. <laughs> and I can't grab him and pull his tail and say, I love you. <laughs> he knows I have to sit in his chair, right? <laughs> Unless he comes too close, and I'll pick him up and kiss him on the nose. But anyways, oh, love to be alive. Southern California, it's about probably, what, 75-ish. Like I said, all year round, uh, the, the average temperature here in Southern California is about 75. No humidity, gentle breeze, oh, no bugs. There is no bugs in Southern California. Maybe if you dig in the dirt, there's worms. But you'll be, you can sit and lie in the backyard in your hammock, sit in the chair out here, and you'll probably never see a fly, all right? And so, whoa, mosquitoes. I haven't been bit, you know, bit by a mosquito. Uh, I can't even remember. It's been years and years and years and years and years and years. Mosquito, what is a mosquito, all right? <laughs> uh, unlike years past. Well, you can go into the mountains, right? You can just travel up about an hour away in the mountains here, which is still part of California. And then you can get bit bit by a mosquito if you uh, if you miss that. <laughs> but not here in Southern California. There are no mosquitoes in the area here. I think I saw one that escaped from Alcatraz or somewhere. But anyways, it was uh, uh, floating somewhere and I whack killed. That was probably about five years ago. So he somehow escaped the mountains and came down to the coast and he got killed. What a sucker! Well, technically they are suckers, right? Blood suckers. <laughs> oh, perfect. Oh, I got him. I caught myself. I caught myself. I caught myself a cat. Oh, didn't think I could get you. My dog doesn't like it when I kiss you. What are you doing, buddy? Oh, yeah. Who's your favorite? I am. Who do you love the most? You, I, you love me the most. <laughs> My dog just says, hey, enough kissing. Okay, no fighting. All right. Little cat blue. Technically blue, but everybody calls him boo-boo. Boo-boo. And my dog in the background there barking is Angel. What an angel. But she is a noser. She is a border collie. And she is uh, watches everything. I always say to her, why are you always watching me? Why do you watch everything? That's what they do. They watch everything. You know, I heard it sometimes, and I do believe this. Most people get pets and animals that, uh, that uh, uh, take after uh, the owners, all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they even look like the owners. I'm constantly watching everything, all right? And I'm constantly running and, and herding, right? People, <laughs> and and helping people to go in the right direction, keeping demons away. That's exactly what my dog does. <laughs> so the cat and watches everything. She she has to see everything, watch everything, control everything. It takes after moi. Anyways, oh, so good to be alive. Okay, hey, chat rooms are open here at livestream.com every day, Monday through Friday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm on here, Daryl Lawson, live and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. So... If you forget all that, just go to DarylLawsonLive.com. Oh, boom, boom. Get all the links, the Facebook uh, links, the Twitter links. Of course, live streams on there. YouTube videos, nearly 700 of them. Uh, 700 almost videos that I've done that are on there. If you didn't watch yesterday's video, I went through, of course, the headlines and some, uh, actually a lot of scriptures. Uh, we talked about the Tulsa police captain, right, being demoted because he wouldn't go to the Islamic party. All right, so he didn't want to go over there. Anyways, that was from Tulsa, Mr. Fields. So if you missed that, I'm telling you, there's always these golden nuggets that I give you every day that will help you piece together the puzzle of life. Whoa, speaking about life, did you see Brad Pitt is in the news? 
Somebody uh, smacked him in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His wife, Angelina Jolie, and him were in L.A. I think it was yesterday for the uh, screening of her new movie, right? Malis Malif Malif Maleficent. Maleficent. There you go. Boom, boom. Anyway, some kind of weird uh, vampire-like movie. Uh, magical, weird, actually demonic, to be honest with you. Uh, I like sci-fi, but I understand uh, the things of the spiritual realm, so I don't get sucked into it, right? So, you know, uh, a lot of the movies are, are, are the sci-fi movies out there are... What's that one coming out tomorrow? I think, I think uh, um, speaking about Scientology yesterday, Scientology, uh, Tom Cruise, right? He's got a movie coming out, I think it's The Edge of Tomorrow. It's coming out, I think, tomorrow. <laughs> So May 29, 2014, I think it comes out tomorrow in the theaters. Anyway, it's about him saving the world again, you know, through technology. And uh, yesterday, uh, I was talking about Scientology a little bit. And I was thinking about him today again in Scientology. Is that people join Scientology because they want to save mankind through scientific technology? Oh, well, uh, mankind has been saved through Jesus, all right? <laughs> so you don't have to go do something that's already been done. So, note to Tom Cruise, all right? <laughs> note to Angelina Jolie. Note to Brad Pitt. The world has already been saved. It's not going to be saved through the United Nations. The world is not going to be saved through NATO or through, or through Obama, Obama Nation. Oh, God help us all. And I'll read some of the headlines today about Obama Nation and how we've screwed up the planet. Anyways. Uh, the world has already been saved through Jesus. Oh, read it, God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every sickness and disease has already been cured. Yeah, did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> All sins have been taken care of. You don't have to light candles. You don't have to give fruit baskets in the front of little statues. You don't have to pray to Mary. I was going to call her Virgin Mary, but Mary's not a virgin anymore, all right? <laughs> All right, I mean, I, I think we learned that in biology, but anyways, or sex education in school. Anyway, so, no, Mary is no longer a virgin, uh, uh, physically anyways. <laughs> she had several kids after Jesus, by the way, and she had normal uh, relationship, uh, marriage relationship with her hubby, all right? You go, Mary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyways, I, won't want, I don't want to get in trouble for that, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, uh, Mary, yeah. Mary, did you know? <laughs> Whoa! Anyway, so, yeah, the world's been saved uh, uh, from its sins. Glory to God! You don't have to pray to Mary. You don't have to light candles. Not that that did anything in the past. Anyways, you don't have to join the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Jewish synagogues. You don't have to join any church or religion or organization. The Mormons, the Catholics... The atheist, you don't have to join Scientology. Oh, hallelujah, I'm telling you. There is nothing like the freedom that you have in Jesus. Oh, Lord, you have to know that the price has already been paid. Yeah, for your sins. Oh, for all sickness and disease. Yeah, for your passageway to heaven. For your peace, your joy, your health, your prosperity. It's been paid been paid by Jesus, all right? So uh, his blood paid for it. So I'm just here on the earth to spread the blood around, right? Spread the love, the blood, the love of the blood around, right? The Bible actually says to have faith in the blood of Jesus. And uh, one of these days, I may just go through the book of Hebrews again. Uh, I love the book of Hebrews. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible and just hammers the blood of Jesus in the face of sickness, disease, every curse, the devil, the new world order. You can't really fight the new world order unless you have Jesus, all right? <laughs> Can I say that again? Can I get an amen? You can't really, truly, fully, uh, uh, effectively fight the new world order, all right? Or, or evil, or the dark side, whatever you want to label it. Deception, corruption, you cannot fight corruption or darkness without the light. Oh, how can you fight darkness without the light? Mm -hmm. So, uh, for everybody out there that, uh, you know, has found out about 9-11 was an inside job, fa found out about who Obama really is, the New World Order, how the GMOs are killing people, etc., etc., etc. For everybody that has found out about the deceptions on the planet, 
go the extra step and get born again and spirit filled. Ooh, boom, uh, yeah, because you cannot be effective and you cannot stay undeceived. Is that a word? You cannot, you cannot stay untainted. You cannot, you cannot be effective or powerful without the light. And Jesus is the light. Oh, the Father, God the Father. God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit, and His Word. You and I and people cannot be effective on this planet pushing back the darkness unless we have the lights. Oh, yay! I mean, otherwise it's just a bunch of facts, and it's just a bunch of uh, information. The true warriors of darkness on this planet for the last 6,000 years are every uh, are all the people. Uh, that have loved Jesus since the Garden of Eden. Oh, 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 oh. when the New World Order came to the Garden of Eden, and 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 the media, the media. Did you know that? Did you know? Did you know that the media was in? Right, the New World Order media was in the Garden of Eden. Of course they were. Screwing up the uh, uh, broadcast, <laughs> just like today, the media broadcast. Oh no, no, no. God d didn't really say that you shouldn't eat of that fruit tree. No, no, no. Let me just tell you what he really said. Oh, 6,000 years later, it's the same uh, 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 operation, all right? It's the, it's the New World Order. It's the, it's, the, it's the dark side, all right? Through media, through, through organizations and banks and religions, blah, 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 still telling people, the wrong information about God. <laughs> because they get off the scriptures, right? They get out of the light. And if people get out of the light, you can't fight darkness with darkness. Uh oh, that's a heavy revy right there. You cannot fight darkness with darkness. No. The only effective way to fight darkness is not to join darkness, is not to... Uh, uh, even expose darkness. That's darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. And that's part of what we should do. But light can really only do that. Light can only push it back. Light can really only expose darkness fully anyway. So for people that are waking up to the deceptions on the planet, wake up all the way. Hallelujah. Arise and shine. Wake up. Be the child of the light by accepting Jesus as your Mighty God, as your mighty Savior, Jesus, forgive my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Something like that. A easy, easy, easy. A easy, right? <laughs> it's the way to do it. And this is the way that when the forces of darkness, I mean, a lot of people try to fight the New World Order, try to fight darkness by doing, you know, uh, little things against them. Well, the forces of darkness will just come knocking on your door and beat your brains in, all right, if you do not have the protection of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bottom line, there's there's always repercussions when you go against the forces of darkness. A lot of people aren't born again, and they are coming against the New World Order, and they're going to die, all right? And they're going to get their brains bashed in, and they are, are going to find out the backlash will destroy them, uh, hurt them, and, and if they don't get to Jesus quickly for his protection, they are doomed, all right? So, you know, I'm all for planting trees. How Plant the trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all for uh, 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 labeling uh, the products to see which ones have GMO or not. I'm all for that. I'm all for ending chemtrails. I'm all for uh, 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 ending the radiation and nuclear crappy waste and, 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 and phony reasons why nuclear plants are being popping up or being uh, uh, constructed around the world. I'm all for ending all that crap. You know, was it Einstein who said that uh, nuclear energy is a, is a poor way to boil water? Yeah. There's tons of other ways to, to create energy on the earth that won't have the byproducts of death, <laughs> like uh, nuclear energy. It's a bad way to boil water. I agree. Anyways, but even doing all that, save the animals, save the whale, save the humans. You know, if you want to save something, save the human babies, right? Anyways, so... I'm all for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save the, save the rate for I'm all into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the weird way. I'm talking about, you know, not destroying the planet, right? But in doing all of that, you can still end up going to hell and hug a tree, all right? <laughs> hug a whale. Hug a penguin. Hug, hug, a, hug a sea lion, all right? Hug the ocean, whatever. Somebody came to my, somebody, some lady came to my door the other day. She was a, uh, a Greenpeace 
a Greenpeace here, right? She was worked for Greenpeace, and she wanted my support. I said, hey. Uh, and I, I talked to her for 20 minutes about everything I could think about, right? You know, anyway, so I always love to take the, uh, if I have time to take the opportunity to tell people what I really think. Anyway, she came to my door, Greenpeace. You can do all of that, give your whole life, right? Uh, even, and then even burn you at the stake for world peace, right? <laughs> Join the United Nations. Don't do it, but people do it. Oh, you know, I'm trying to save the planet. And volunteer everywhere. You know, take out your neighbor's garbage. All of that is nice, but all of that won't get to get you to heaven. All right, all of that really won't be uh, uh, effective against the forces of darkness because they laugh at you unless you have the power of Jesus, of His Spirit, and His Word uh, flowing through you, the sword of the Spirit. So, all of that uh, in itself is good stuff to do, and we should do that. If anybody should know about uh, uh, what's good and what's evil, what's corrupt and what's bad seed, good seed, uh, what's going on, uh, good on the earth and what's good. Should be the born again, spirit filled Christian, but a lot of times they're not. They're only in name. A lot of people are religious, but they really don't have the power of God in their lives, so they end up to be the, the ignorant ones and the and religious weirdos on the earth. Anyways, and not just, uh, I'm talking about all religions in, you know, uh, together incorporated, right? But anyways, let me say it again. You can do all the good on the earth, but without Jesus, uh, you're going to go to hell. <laughs> without Jesus, you'll really not have the peace of God. You'll not have peace in your life. You'll not have the joy. You'll not. You can go on uh, like Brad and Angeline. You can go. You can go adopt all the kid. You can uh, all the kids in Africa, all the kids in Asia. Well, you couldn't do that, but uh, you, you can have a hundred kids, two hundred kids. Uh, you know, go down to Katrina and build five hundred houses. That's great, you know, the Katrina area there uh, in Louisiana. That's great. But you're never going to have the peace of God. Oh, the protection of God, uh, uh, the love of God, the joy of God, the strength of God, the help of God, except you go through Jesus. Glory to God and get Jesus in your life. I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about Jesus. That's it. All right, before you leave the planet, get Jesus, all right? <laughs> get your life insurance. And the sooner the better. You don't have to just get Jesus on your deathbed. All right, uh, uh, who knows when they're going to die anyway. Look, people die of heart attacks. Sucks to be them. Uh-oh. You, you waited too long. You died of a heart attack without Jesus. And now you're going to spend eternity in hell because the devil hates you. And Jesus died for you. It wasn't God's fault that he woke you up every day telling you that you needed to get your sins washed away, that there is a heaven and there's a hell. You didn't pay attention and you died of a heart attack. Oh, it's not God's fault. All right, and so the devil's laughing at you uh, all your life, and then he laughs at you when you die, and he drags your soul to hell. Whoa! And you stay with that freak forever. Oh, my God. So get Jesus, all right? <laughs> get the gospel. You want to take medication? Get the gospel. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the New Testament, the Old Testament. That, actually, the whole Bible is the gospel, the good news. Anyways... Oh, I've got some headlines I want to read here. So it's a great time to be alive, and uh, and really it is. And the reason I say that is not just because of technology, and yet I love technology. Uh, I love the Internet. I love the new smartphones. I love living in this day and age where no more carburetors in cars. Remember the old carburetors? Oh, my. Now, I, I worked on them. I took them apart. I was in uh, 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 auto mechanic college, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, and... Man, all the great stuff, but when fuel injection came around, oh, Lord Jesus, bye-bye carburetor. Who wants a carburetor now? I love fuel injection. More power, less fuel. Woo! You know, and now they've really uh, uh, perfected the uh, uh, fuel injection. Woo! Lord Jesus, I never want to ever see a carburetor. Look at that nice car, the carburetor. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can transform the old cars in, in, into, car, into uh, fuel injection, right? From the car, but it's, please do that. That's such a good feeling. And anyways, I love technology. Uh, I love to live in 2014. But the reason I do is because I can live in the peace of God, regardless of what I see in my bank account, regardless of what I see in my checkbook, <laughs> regardless of what I see that's going on in the White House. You know, we're not happy because we're rich or we're poor. We're not happy because uh, the Republicans are in power or the Democrats. We're not happy uh, 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 because uh, whatever reason. Happiness only comes through 
a real day in and day out walk with the Father, Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, uh, and His Word, yeah. I love it, because I've had that ever since I've been a kid. I don't remember having a bad day. I never have a bad day. Oh, does things happen uh, that, that attack me? Of course they do. People say, Daryl, do people say bad things against you? Hold on, sneeze. Here comes sneeze. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I hate when they come and they go like that. Anyways, well, maybe I kissed my cat. That's what I did. I, yeah, I did kiss my cat. There we go. People always, uh, somebody asked me last night, oh, you know, do you ever get, you know, negative emails? Do you ever get negative comments? What? I just ignore them. I just delete them. Boom, boom, boom. I don't, well, I don't have time to read negative comments, all right? So I, uh, so people want to know, do you read the negative comments? No. 99.99999% no. I don't read any negative comments. I just, I don't have time. The Bible says to meditate on God's Word. Why do, why do I want to meditate on something that's the opposite of God's Word? Some kind of complaining boo-hoo uh, of the devil attack. I, I, got nothing, I don't know time for that. The reason why Adam and Eve got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, uh, Orchard of Eden, whatever, oh, the paradise, was because they paid attention to their enemies' words. Don't, don't ever pay attention to the, to the enemies' words. Delete them. Do not listen to them. No, 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 no. I can't hear you. That's right. He hates that. You know what the devil hates more than anything? You know what the New World Order, you know what uh, uh, Obama hates? You know what Hillary hates? You know what John Kerry? You know what the Bilderbergers hate? You know what the Illuminati, the devil worshippers around the world? You know what they hate the most? They hate uh, uh, you and I not listening to their crap not listening and agreeing with their media, with their press releases. <laughs> we don't listen to you. Ha ha ha! And we laugh at them and we don't pay attention to it. And we focus on the truth. That's what we have to do. And they hate that. I was looking at a scripture I want to get into here in a little bit. I don't want to read it right now, but Psalm 145. Oh, I put this on my Facebook this morning. Uh, powerful. Uh, there's only, what, 21 verses in Psalm 145 that was written by the, by God, by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus, by the way. What? Jesus wasn't even alive yet. Jesus was always alive. Jesus always existed. He just came to the era 2,000 years ago and got himself and created himself a body. So, yeah, Jesus wrote Psalm 145. Yeah, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit wrote Psalm 145. And the Bible, by the way, yeah. So it says here, a psalm of praise of David. So God used David to pen these words like God uses humans to do everything on the planet. Yeah. Or his angels. Yeah. By prayer. By humans. So angels show up on the earth and work on the earth, not on their own, but because humans prayed and loosed them on the earth. Yeah. So angels just can't show up on their own and just do whatever they want. They have to come in a, in a, in a direct result of what humans do through their prayers, all right, and their actions. Yeah, same in in the, in the same way, the forces of darkness, uh, they can't show up and do what they want to do on the earth except through humans. So the devil really can't do what he wants to do on the earth unless he has an Obama, an abomination in the White House, right? He can't, yeah, what? Why didn't he show up and say, hey, I'm taking over? There was only two people on the earth in the Garden of Eden, just two, Adam and Eve. Two. And yet the fallen angel, woo, the uh, Lucifer, the devil, Satan, couldn't even take over the planet. Two people on the earth. So when he comes around bragging how much, oh, it's strength he has and power, blah, blah, just remind him. Oh, you're so hot, you think you're so hot, you couldn't even take over the planet when Adam and Eve were on the earth. Oh, and there's been 6,000 years since Adam and Eve lived on the planet. And you still haven't take over, taken over this planet. What what gives you the proof that you, through Powder Puff Boy, Tinkerbell in the White House, what gives you the idea that Tinkerbell in the White House is going to be woo, the one that's going to take over the planet? Are you out of your mind? You're going to try, try, hop and puff, try to blow down the house, but you can't because it's based on the word. You lose. You always lose, devil. Two people on the earth, and he couldn't even uh, take over the planet. 
Oh, what's wrong? All right. Well, they had children. He couldn't stop them from having children. He couldn't stop them from, from multiplying on the earth uh, and uh, doing God's will. Some went to the dark side. Some went to the light side, to, to God's side. But for 6,000 years, oh, what's the matter, Mr. Devil? You're crying like a baby. Boo-hoo. I always tell him that. I say, you are a loser. The biggest loser in history that we know of, all right, for, for sure in human history, and, and as far as we know of in, in, in angelic history, the biggest loser in the universe is the devil. Oh, is the fallen angel Lucifer. Loser, all right. <laughs> you take that prize. Behind door number one, the biggest loser. Oh, we're not talking about losing weight. All right, anyways, that is just makes my day to realize uh, uh how to defeat darkness the f in the fullness or the or in the most effective way is to have Jesus living in your heart by his by his spirit my god go to god every day every day every day through the scriptures through the power of his spirit and the and his word which is the bible i love it anyways the chat rooms are open who's in the chat rooms right now people are listening and chit chatting right here uh, Sonya's in the house. Yee hee! <laughs> Devil's a wimp. Oh, yeah. Wimp r rhymes with chimp. Yeah, he's a, he's a wimpy chimp. Sean Britt's in the house. Yeah. Connie Barlow. Other people are coming to the front door right here. Good to see you. Halo. Talking about, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, talking about Michael Jackson and the Beatles music. I think, yeah, I think Michael Jackson did own, <laughs> on a side note. I think he got the rights to the Beatles' music. Isn't that weird? Yeah, anyways. Who knows where, where it land, land, ended up now, but uh, always thinking about that. The devil always, you know, has the people on the earth to sell out to the New World Order or to whatever, secular humanism or the world's way of doing things or let's just, to, to the dark side, you know. The people sell out their talents, uh, 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 their companies, uh, their past, present, futures to the forces of darkness one way or another. And the devil really says he's going to pay people a lot of wealth, a lot of money, but ends up ripping them off. I mean, the devil is the, is the biggest liar, so why would he keep his word? All right, people sell their soul to the devil, all right? But the rewards are, 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 are pitiful. If you knew what people had to go through uh, and live in, oh, the devil is the worst taskmaster, the worst slave driver. You think Pharaoh was bad? You think Hitler was bad? Yeah, I mean, whoa! Uh, who did they serve? They served uh, uh, the fallen angel Lucifer. He's the worst. So uh, I will, I by the grace and help of God, I will live to fight the the, the dark side all the days of my life until Jesus returns uh, one of these days in the rapture, and then again at the Battle of Armageddon. Oh, 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 oh! Anyways, chat rooms are open. Ch chat away here. I'm just scrolling down. I have so many uh, windows open here. My computer is going slow, but I can see you in here. I can see you're chatting. Debbie Norman's in the house. And like I said, do you know? Watch my videos. If you missed any of my videos, go to DarylawsonLive.com. Uh, check the videos out there, the links, and send it to all your friends on your Facebook, your Twitter, your emails, uh, and do them. And, and you know, God will use the videos to uh, break open. Uh, 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 truth into their lives. Not because of me, but because of the scriptures and the power of the Holy Spirit. I love it. I'm not bound to any kind of denomination. I'm not bound to any kind of political party. I'm not bound to any kind of weird, dead tradition. I just say it like it is, my friend. Woo! <laughs> I don't wear a backwards collar. I'm not a Roman Catholic. I'm not a Mormon. I'm not a Hindu Buddhist. Uh, I'm not a uh, 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 Jewish in the sense of the word uh, uh, from the temples around here or on the planet. I am biblically Jewish, uh, uh, spiritually Jewish, etc., uh, etc. Et Anyways, oh, just look at uh, the chat room. Hey, hey, I'll read your comments in a moment here. Uh, like I said, my my computer is slow like molasses on that. Anyways, okay. Some of the headlines right here. Uh, like I said, Brad Pitt got, I think, got slapped in the face yesterday. Uh, at uh, that opening uh, movie of his wife there, the screening right in Hollywood, yeah. So they caught him and they took him away. It was sort of a hoax or or, or kind of a party crasher guy. I put that on Facebook. Anyways, it looked like uh, Brad Pitt was uh, pretty shaken up there. Uh, how somebody could get through the crowd, 
Maleficent, right? Is that how you say that? Maleficent. Ma Ma Maleficent. That's such a freaky demonic name. Anyways, uh, why can't I even pronounce that pro properly? Anyways, Maleficent. Okay, something like that. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about? Whoever uses that word, I don't know anybody that has ever used that word in my whole life. <laughs> so far until this movie. Anyways. But anyways, Angelina's new demonic movie's out, and Brad Pitt was there, and someone jumped the guardrail, and I think kissed him, and then slapped him in the face. And a guy, a guy. Even though Brad Pitt had all, and Angelina Jolie had all these bodyguards around, it must shock people to realize that uh, 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 you can't stop crazy, right? You can't stop demons with bodyguards. You can't stop we evil people all the time without the protection of God, 100%. And I, I, I don't know Brad Pitt. I don't know Angelina Jolie. Maybe they did give their, their, their lives to Jesus and are working on the way to transform them life, transform themselves with the Word. You know, uh, just because I accepted Jesus a long time ago doesn't mean I did everything perfect. I was brought up in the Roman Catholic crap cult, and so it took a while to weave that off of my life because I didn't have enough knowledge of the Word. So... People are going to be surprised who uh, ends up in heaven. All right, now, I can't believe that person got to heaven. Well, they accepted Jesus. They they they, they were working uh, uh, out their salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, which means that you're taking the word and washing yourself. A revelation comes day by day, you know. So not everybody walks in the full revelation of Jesus yet, right? And so. Uh, you have people in Hollywood and music industry and all that that are are battling, right? Battling their desires, battling and, and going forward. They lose a lot of battles. And if they don't get into the Word and don't turn from all the wicked wicked ways, the devil will come in and punch their brains in. And so, you know, they have a relationship with Jesus. A lot of people do. Uh, it, sometimes it's, it's a very, uh, 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 you know, a long distance relationship. You know, sometimes they're close to the Lord at times in their life, and they go far further away. When Adam and Eve sin, I can't now. No, I know Angelina and Jolie and Brad Pitt. They can't love Jesus. Well, I'll leave that to the Lord. I know uh, people are in a battle. When, uh, for instance, when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, when they both sinned. The Lord showed up and started to talk to Adam and Eve. Hey, well, you know, have you eaten from the tree I told you not to eat from? So uh, Adam, you know, conversed with God. So Adam and Eve were in a fallen, sinful state, all right? But they still had a relationship with God, and God still talked to them, and they still heard from God. Now, they were uh, in trouble. Uh, they were condemned now because of sin, and they needed God's help. But in their fallen state, in their sinful state, they did have a relationship with God. Now, had they died right there, they would go to hell, right? And so they needed the blood of Jesus to cover them, right? So, but to say that Adam and Eve didn't have a relationship with God, uh, I'm not talking about a born-again relationship. I'm talking about God talking to sinners and sinners talking back to them, back to God. Now, that happens all the time on the planet. People that do that all the time doesn't mean they're not going to go to hell unless they get their sins washed away. So when people say people don't, you can't, you can't have a relationship with God outside of Jesus. That's true and, and 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 not true. What kind of relationship? God's always talking to humans, sinners and saints alike. So you can call that a relationship. That's some kind of relationship. Maybe long distance. They may not be uh, uh, heirs of the promises of God. They may, they may be on their way to hell, but God still will give people in the world, sinners, dreams and visions and talk to them and converse. The God even talks to the devil. Doesn't mean the devil's right. God has a relationship with the devil. Yeah, I mean, doesn't mean that God uh, uh, loves the devil's doings. No, 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 no. In the book of Job, I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, God said to the devil, where have you been? So he has a working relationship with the devil. Doesn't mean the devil's right. Same thing with Brad, uh, Pitt, Angelina, Joe, Lee, everybody in Hollywood, and everybody in the New World Order, everybody on the planet, saint and sinner. Somehow God has built a relationship into their lives, hoping that they will turn. All right? Call it a... Uh, uh, whatever. Whatever you want to... It, it is some sort of relationship. Doesn't mean they're on their way to heaven. All right? And uh, that relationship will be there uh, in the sinner's life until that person dies, all right? 
and then they will be cast into hell if they're not if their sins aren't washed away. So I know that's a little more uh, uh, that's a little you know more to chew on because most people get you can only have a relationship with God through Jesus. Well, that's true. Uh, a a born again relationship, a a a a covenant relationship, of course, but. There is proof after proof that God has relationships with every person on the earth. So God's talking to Angelina Jolie. God's talking to Brad Pitt. God's uh, talking to the people. God's even talking to the devil. Like he did in the book of Job. Hey, what are you doing, devil? I'm going to to and fro on the earth. <laughs> well, what, yeah, because you're crazy. All right? But does that mean that God does not talk to fallen angels? And uh, 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 you can see that in the book of Job, God talks to sinners all the time. Thank God, God talks to sinners all the time. In the last days, God will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. That means all flesh means sinful flesh, and it means uh, 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 the saints, all right? They'll go to the born again, spirit filled people. How do you think God talks to the sinner? God is always trying to open up lines of communication to the people, uh, they have a hard time listening because of all the other voices of the flesh and the forces of darkness. But a lot of sinners hear the voice of God on the planet. They just choose not to get their sins washed away. Or they, or, or they, or they walk in deception and say, well, I have another day. Not yet. I don't, I'm having too much uh, uh, lust in the world, and I don't want to go in that way yet. Blah, 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 whatever. So uh, even the demoniac, Jesus entered into the area of the Gadarenes, right? And he said... To the demon possessed, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, talk to him, and he talked back, and, and uh, he actually the, 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 the demon possessed guy in the times of Jesus, the Gadarene, the demon, the, 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 the demoniac, they call him the demoniac uh, of Gadara. Anyways, he talked to Jesus, and Jesus talked back to him, and he was a total demon possessed sinner. So there's lines of communication and relationship with people uh, throughout the Bible with God and on the earth, everybody. One way or another, sinner or saint can have a relationship with God, uh, uh, but they're not protected if they're not born again. And they're, unless someone else is praying for them. Now that's a whole other story right there, but this is just a little more meat to chew on. A lot of people are sinners and hear from God. God's constantly pleading with them. You need to go in this direction. You need to totally submit to my word. You need to be a hearer and doer of my scripture, etc., etc. And a lot of sinners have conversations back, I don't want to do it yet. It's going to cost me my career. It's going to cost me blah, 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 blah. And then they just go they go back and, back and forth until they draw their last breath. And then there's nothing more God can do for them, right? But God is constantly, uh, the Bible says that God is good to the just and the unjust. I know people can't handle that, but that's not my problem. That's what the Bible says. So sinners can hear from God. Sinners can talk to God and God can talk back to them, all right? <laughs> and hear God in visions and dreams and... and and uh, in life, all right, they have that ability. It's a, it's it's a lot easier to hear from God when you are born again, spirit filled, and the devils are off your back. Oh, the monkeys off your back. The monkeys are off your back. Of course, the devils can't beat your brain because there is no there's not that much protection to the sinners out there unless other people are praying for them. But because of free will, the Bible says whatever a human uh, 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 does that. Uh, he'll also get back, right? So whatever you plant, you'll you'll reap, all right? You'll harvest. So there is a sp the spiritual laws that say when the sinners sin, the devils have a uh, right to beat in their brains and to bring all the curses of of the universe uh, or of the planet into their lives, right? So it's a terrible way to live. So anyways, how do we get off into that? Oh, that's good stuff right there. But anyways, interesting stuff. People get People get upset. Ah, no, 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 only, oh, you can only hear from God through Jesus. Uh, well, Jesus is God, number one. <laughs> and who do you think is talking to the people? Jesus. <laughs> All right. It's, the Bible says that wisdom is Jesus, and he's crying out uh, from the book of Proverbs and on the planet uh, to all people. And he's crying out, hey, how long will you be stupid? That's what he's saying. <laughs> so he's talking to everybody. <laughs> you know, now their prayers uh, uh uh, to God aren't answered if you're a sinner, unless it's in direct relationship to your uh, uh, born again experience, right? So, anyways, that's just kind of it's a legal. Uh, the spiritual realm is a legal realm, and so uh, you know God wants to uh, uh, bless everybody, but God can't. Oh, 
No, not the way he wants to. Yeah, he sends the rain on the uh, the rain on the just and the unjust. Even my even my even my dog says, "Yeah, come here, angel, come here." Who needs an alarm system when you have a dog? Come here, come here, angel, come here, come here, come here, girl, yeah, all the way, come here, good girl. Who needs an alarm system when you have a dog? Hey, shush it. So, uh, I, yeah, I do have, uh, I have an alarm system here, <laughs> but I also have a dog. So, anyways, okay, let's get some of the headlines right here. That's some good stuff. And I know people are going to say, ah, oh, well, blah, 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 but I, I can't uh, uh, help that people understand what I'm talking about. So, and it's throughout the Bible. I constantly give scriptures on that. But, yeah, uh, even though you Adam and Eve, they heard the voice of God, had Adam and Eve not gotten the blood of Jesus back onto their lives and cleansed their sins away, they're going to hell. You can hear from God, blah, 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 all you want. You can hear the voice of God, t you know, telling you about uh, secrets that he wants you to change and he wants you to get better and he wants to help you and he has all these good things in store for you and he gives you business and dreams. But if you don't get the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus uh, into your life by, by in, through his name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to go to hell and you have no protection basically against the forces of darkness unless someone else is praying for you. Okay, anyways... Uh, talking about the New World Order, oh, uh, it's kind of strange right here. Here's a, uh, I'm just reading from uh, Drudge Report, I'm reading from my uh, Facebook, I'm, running, I'm re reading from Infowars, I'm reading from RT. Anyways, here, here's one, uh, the, the New World Order is pushing uh, the transgender, right, uh, rights movement, right? When you open up uh, uh, the can of worms, all the worms come out. So basically, without Jesus, people don't know. Uh, right from wrong. They don't know uh, that God created Adam and Eve. They don't know the the blessedness of marriage between a man, a male, and a female, right? They don't know uh, their left hand from their right hand, spiritually speaking. Uh, so anyway, so you, you can't really expect the world to be preaching uh, the right way. So, you know, just remember that. But because... Anything in the Bible, the devil hates. The devil hates the right way. He likes the perverted way. So, of course, the world's going to push, you know, their weird anti-Bible uh, agenda. Okay. This is the one I want to really look at right here. Um, there's two on this particular page I want to look at right here. Uh, I read here that... Uh, uh, that there is a possibility that because the U.S. and the New World Order is really attacking Russia, Russia is going to release Putin, right? Uh, Vladimir Putin may release uh, uh, the truth about 9-11. Oh, a lot of the governments around the world know the truth about 9-11, right? How 9-11 was a total scam by the New World Order, right? It wasn't... Uh, 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 it wasn't masterminded by some guys in the cave. It wasn't masterminded by Osama bin Laden. No, 9-11 was masterminded by the governments on the planet, including the USA, including Israel, including Saudi, including Saudi Arabia, including Europe, the European uh, heads of the countries. Of course, the, Brit the uh, British royalty, oh, the Queen, they all were in the Vatican. They're all involved with bringing down the Twin Towers, right? And also building number seven, right? Anyway, so I'll, I'll try to get to that article in a moment. Um, but here's one about 9-11. NBC censors Snowden's critical 9-11 comments from the primetime audience. All right, this one actually has to, uh, is on InfoWars, which is, I think, a very good article, because I'm going to read some other articles about 9-11, and how, if I can get to it, how Russia, from some of the sources that I've seen, is going to uh, drop the drop the ball, drop the information on, or at least release information, how 9-11 was an inside job, was a scam. Oh, by the New World Order governments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. I hope it happens. I'm praying for it. Because what that'll do is that'll uh, take the focus off the deception and bring it into the truth and the real facts. And hopefully people will go, what is really going on? And it'll help them on their journey for truth. Oh, what is truth? Jesus is the truth, all right? NBC censors Snowden's critical 9-11 comments from primetime audience. Quote, they found that we had all of the information we needed as an intelligence community to detect this plot. This one here is an article that was written today by Michael Thalen. 
It says, statements made by the NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden regarding the 9-11 terror attacks were edited out of the NBC Nightly News interview. Of course they were. Uh, because the New World Order runs the media on television. Yeah. So they edited out the information about 9-11 on the NBC Nightly News recently interview with Brian Williams on Wednesday, yesterday, in what appears to be an attempt to bolster legitimacy for the agency's controversial surveillance programs. Uh, bottom line is that 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 curtain has been brought, uh, been opened. All right, the man behind the curtain, uh, the New World Order, is being uh, 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 light has been is being shined on 9/11 for a long time, and it's it's just so good for people waking up all over the earth, realizing that 9/11 was a scam. Right? Let me just continue reading here for a moment. Uh, quote: You know, this is a key question that the 9/11 Commission considered. And what they found in the post-mortem, when they looked at all the classified intelligence from all the different intelligence agencies, they found that we had all the information we needed as an intelligence community, as a classified sector, as the national defense of the U.S. to detect this plot. Of course they did. It was an inside job. It was a false flag event. Duh. He goes on to say, we actually had records of the phone calls from the U.S. and out. From the United States and out. The CIA knew who these guys were. It was an inside job. They wanted the Twin Towers to come down for a, 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 for a, for a false flag event so that they could use the excuse to go after uh, and to bring this phony war on terror and the, 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 the wars and the rumors of wars around, around the earth to take out countries, uh, uh, not because there was real uh, terrorists there, but because the countries didn't want to fall into the New World Order plan. Yeah. The CIA knew who these guys were. The problem was not that we weren't collecting information. It wasn't that we didn't have enough dots. It was that we didn't have a haystack. It was, that, it was that we did not understand the haystack that we had. Well, some of them, but the higher-ups did. NBC's decision to annex Snowden's comments are unsur unsurprising, given the fact that 9-11 attacks are exhaustively used by the federal government as the prime justification, here it is, uh, for surveilling millions of innocent Americans. Yeah, how do you think the U.S. government and, and, and the European governments and the world governments have the uh, 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 the force and the excuse to surveil everybody, all right, to take away people's uh, liberties and freedoms uh, all in the name of security. They couldn't have done this without having a boogeyman, right, under the bed, right, exactly. That's what 9-11 was. Was it real? Yeah. Was it de deceptive? Yeah. Was it a false flag event? Yes. Uh, so the justification to do their uh, crazy new world agenda. Yeah, Snowden remarked on the government's prior knowledge of the accused Boston bomber as well, or bombers, right? Also cut from the primetime interview. See, you know NBC is national bullcrap, all right? You know that. Oh, if we're missing things like the Boston Marathon bombings, quote, where, where all of these mass surveillance, uh, where are all these mass surveillance systems anyways? Every domestic dragnet in the world didn't reveal guys that the Russian intelligence service told us about? Is that really the best way to protect our country, or are we trying to throw money at a magic solution? So he's saying, yeah, they know everything, and yet, oh, they can't find these guys, and when they find these guys, uh, they, uh, they don't tell the whole truth. All right, anyways. Despite countless government officials pointing to 9-11 before it happened, right, around the world, uh, whether missed or ignored, establishment media outlets have continued to work to keep such voices out of relevant reporting. So the, uh, the U.S. government and the governments around the world knew 9-11 was going to happen and that they let it happen anyway, just like other false flag events, like Pearl Harbor, oh, etc., etc. Anyways, former NSA senior executive turned whistleblower Thomas Drake, who revealed unconstitutional surveillance programs targeting Americans in 05, has repeatedly commented on NSA intelligence that would have undoubtedly stopped the 9-11 attacks. They didn't want the 9-11 attacks stopped. Anyways, this keeps coming up because it needs to be repeated over and over because people need to realize 
that the U.S. government, the Canadian government, the Mexican government, the European government, most governments on the planet, 99.99% of them, have been hijacked by the New World Order. Yeah. Not to say they're not people in, partly in the governments that are fighting back, but they're the minority, really. But they still are a monkey wrench in the New World Order's gears, and I love it. A hindering force. NSA had critically intelligent, critical intelligence about Al-Qaeda and associated movements in particular that had never been properly shared outside the NSA. They were told not to share everything. They simply did not share critical intelligence, although they had it. Of course, you cannot allow everybody to know what's going on because they would have stopped 9-11. In a January letter to President Obama, Drake and fellow, fellow whistleblowers, uh, even William Binney, Edward Loomis, and Kirk Wiebe, not only detailed the agency's foreknowledge of 9-11, but the ensuing cover-up. The sad reality, Mr. President, is that the NSA itself had enough information to prevent 9-11, but chose to sit on it and not share it. We know we were there. The letter reads, we were witnesses to many bureaucratic indignities, uh, bureaucratic ind indignities that made NSA at least uh, 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 responsible for pre-11 failures as other intelligent agencies. Well, they just didn't want, they, they were told to stand down. Anyways, really good stuff. Former, se former senior intelligence officer uh, Schaefer, Lieutenant Colonel Anthony, who attempted to inform the government after identifying the two terrorist cells later charged for the 9-11 attacks in 2000 during Operation Able Danger was attacked and demonized by the Defense Intelligence Agency after informing Congress that of the agency's refusal to act. It's not that the agency, the CIA, the government didn't have the information, they just didn't want to act on it. Anyways, a very interesting article right here. Oh, on and on. If you understand 9-11, you understand what Obama was doing. You understand what the New World Order is doing. You understand what Bilderberg is doing, right? Which is the continuation from the forerunners to the Antichrist, all right? The former presidents were working for the New World Order. Of course they were. were. And when they turned out, when they ref when former presidents refused to continue working for the New World Order, they were either assassinated or taken out of, taken out of office or attempted assassinated, you know, to shut up, yeah. Very good articles. Very good articles right here. You can look at this particular one at Infowars.com, the 9-11 uh, uh, cover-up uh, on the NBC, continuing to be cover-up on the NBC, uh, NBC interview with Snowden. Oh, here's another one right here. Uh, I'll just use this one quickly, then I'll jump on to my Facebook. Obama considers using military against Bundy and the supporters. Well, this standoff still... Somewhat is still going off in Nevada with the Bundy Ranch. Obama wants to use drones. Of course Obama wants to use the military and drones against the American people. That's always the plan. Obama is just a poster child for the New World Order. This article is all over. This information is all over the Internet. But this just happens to be one from InfoWars again, since it's right here. Pentagon Directive authorizes use of federal troops and drones. All right, against the American people, right? It says, Bill Gertz, writing for the Washington Times, this is where I saw it originally, reports that Obama, the Obama administration, Obama nation, has, and I would say is, considering using the military during a standoff between the Bundy Ranch, right? In the past and maybe even in the future, right? Uh, a 2010 Pentagon Authorization Directive Number 3025-18, or Defense Support of Civil Authorities, issued on... Uh, December 29, 2010, states U.S. military commanders, quote, are provided emergency authority to use military arms and forces, including drones, against the American people. Yeah, yeah, in America, in domestic unrest situations. That's why there was a no-fly zone, I believe, over the Bundy Ranch recently. Yeah, probably still is. The directive, the directive is in direct conflict with the Posse Comitatus Act, right? The federal law enacting following Reconstruction in 1878 prohibits the federal government from using the federal military troops to enforce state laws. Obama doesn't care about laws. Posse Comitatus was modified under the John Warner National Defense Authorization Act in 07. 
blah, 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 of the, of the act allows the federal government to use, quote, the armed forces in major public emergencies as a result of natural disaster, epidemic, or other serious public health emergency, terrorist, or attack uh, incident, or other condition. In 2010, Pentagon Directive states federal military forces shall not be used to quell, so, to stop, or quell uh, civil, that means American disturbances on American soil unless specifically authorized by the president. Well, he's going to do that, you know that in accordance with applicable law or permitted under emergency authority. So all Obama has to do, and what he's going to do, by the way, oh, let me just get rid of this. That was my, uh, that was my feed. That was not your feed. Don't worry about that. That was my feed. Sorry about that. Anyways, we'll get that back up in a second here. There's a strong feed coming in right now. Oh, uh, technical difficulty has just been fixed. There you go. There you go. All right, anyways, continuing here. Uh, we all know, we should know, that in the near future, uh, the abomination of desolation, the Antichrist, right, uh, will, Obama, will use some kind of martial law emergency situation in the USA and around the world to set up a one-world government. He's just waiting for the right timing, right? Right now he's having a hard time. And the uh, New World Order is freaking out that uh, uh, people are waking up to their crazy actions and their sneaky, underhanded, dark, deceptive ways, right? So, But it, it's just a matter of time, uh, not if, but when Obama will declare uh, civil or, or unrest or a national emergency or global emergency to set up a worldwide martial law to bring in the uh, one world government, 100%. That's what, he, that's what he's been called to do. So all these laws, past laws, have been set in place and are being modified now by Obama to 100% give him all the authority he needs to not only uh, take over America and get rid of the Constitution and civil liberties, but also to get rid of the, uh, the sovereignties and the laws of all nations and transform them and he's called to change all the laws on the planet, not just here in the USA, to bring in a one world religion and one world government. That's Obama's mandate. All right, yeah. Anyways, you can read this, blah, blah, blah. The United States government has the right, under executive orders, National, uh, National Defense Authorization Act of Obama, uh, that has been modified uh, under the United Nations laws now they're bringing in. The, the fact that uh, Obama has the power now to, to change all laws in the U.S. doesn't matter what the Constitution says, doesn't matter what uh, the states are saying, uh, doesn't matter what the governors say, doesn't matter what the individuals uh, say in Congress, uh, 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 in the House, the Senate, doesn't matter. He is about to declare worldwide uh, emergency so that he can set up martial law and bypass all the sovereign laws of every country. Oh, yes! Oh! I know it from the Bible and I know it from his writings, all right? I know it from, uh, from the articles that Obama has, uh, or his laws that he's been making, yeah. Executive orders. Okay, here's one here. By the way, just a side note, jumping or switching a different gear here for a moment. If you haven't seen, uh, 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 you cannot fight the New World Order, all right, unless you have Jesus, and then unless you are, unless you stay healthy and strong, right? So I constantly put uh, articles on my Facebook and, and Twitter, of course, my Facebook pages, to help people live strong spiritually, physically, mentally, uh, and every other way, right? Uh, uh, here's one right here, healthimpactnews.com. Here's a help, a helping uh, uh, informational article to help you achieve optimal health, right? Full health to eat more saturated fats. Ooh, if you don't eat the right kind of fats, you will suffer. Saturated fats, although supplying more calories, will not cause you to get fat. And it will not uh, 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 promote heart disease, right? There's good fat that you're supposed to take in into your system. I won't get into this whole article, but look at this article by healthimpactnews.com. The heading is to achieve optimal health. You got to eat more fat. Eat more saturated fat. Did you know that? Oh, I'm doing that. I put it in my tea. Coconut oil is great to do that. Other things as well. 
Ah, so this whole thing about don't eat fat anymore. You're 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 you're, you're hurting your brain, as well as uh, stay away from fluoride, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. I thought this was a weird article, but I posted this up from Daily Mail, anyways. UK tourists, tourists, people who have traveled to North Korea find it normal and a happy place. Now, either this is propaganda. Or we're not being told the whole story. And I have to say, probably we're not being told the whole story about North Korea. I've said this over and over. Here's a photographer, Aram Pan, witnessed bustling markets, men and women enjoying themselves at a western-looking water park, blah, blah, blah. Now, I understand countries around the world that are under dictatorships, they are sometimes only allowed to go into certain areas and countries to see the best side of the countries. Well, yeah, that's true. But I, I, I in this article, but also from other articles... We are not the world, of course we're not. NBC can't even tell you what Edward Snowden is, can, is saying. <laughs> In an interview, they've got to edit all, right, all the good stuff. But I am convinced by looking at uh, uh, history and information from around the world that the North Korean uh, uh, constant state of panic that the news is, is putting on the world, oh, North Korea fires a missile, oh, North Korea, blah, blah, blah. Is, is, is all, is, is most of it is hype. Now, is the guy a freak? Yeah. Has he been placed in, there by the CIA? Yeah. And the Vatican? Of course. But they control him. He's a puppet dictator, a little fat, pudgy one, uh, that looks like a squished popsicle. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, he's put in there, uh, to bring fear and panic and havoc and just to be used, uh, in, ca uh, in case they need him one of these days to cause a regional war or a world war. They put people, they put Hitler in power. They put the Libyan president in power. They put in, uh, I mean, seriously, they, uh, Saddam Hussein they put in power. They put in Osama bin Laden in power. They kept them in power. It's the same, same old. But uh, tourists travel to North Korea to find it normal. I am, uh, it just reminds me that not everything that we're, we're told uh, on the media in the media, around the world, about North Korea is correct. Now, yeah, of course, dictators suck all the wealth of themselves, the people starve, but there's a lot more to the story, and probably uh, it's the fact that uh, Kim Jong-un, I think it is, right? His dad was Kim Jong-il, but anyways, this Un guy, the son, the dictator of North Korea, uh, is, a, is a CIA uh, plant. He's wor he worked for the CIA. He works now for the CIA. He works for the U.S. government. He works for the Vatican. Of course he does. Anyways, remember that. Keep yourself informed. Uh, and uh, uh, doesn't mean he's not crazy. Doesn't mean, but he's kept in power uh, to be used whenever they want a uh, a tragedy or a fear uh, uh, released on the planet. Of course, in that part of the world. Of course, of course, of course. This one is very interesting. Talking about deception and abomination. This one here is Vision to America dot com, but it's all over the internet now. Doctor Ben Carlson defends birthers. What's a birther? Well, apparently the first birther was the uh, uh, was the former president, Bill and Hillary Clinton, right? Uh, Bill and Hillary, right, were the first ones apparently to come out with the information about Obama being born in Kenya. So the original birthers are actually the Clintons. Did you know that? Yeah. Anyway, that's a fact. Uh, but they were told to shut up and they were threatened with death, not only to them, but also to their daughter, Chelsea. So they shut up. All right. So anyways, but here's Dr. Ben Carlson. He defends the birthers. Anybody that believes that Obama was not U.S. born, he was born in Kenya, that he's not showing the right uh, uh, information, that he's lying, he's covering up, that's a birther, right? Well, Dr. Ben Carlson defends birthers. All right. Americans have the right to see Obama's records. Oh, got to got to read this one for a moment here. Oh, love it! All right, uh, I, this is this is good enough to read myself. It's to slow down and put it in slow right here and read this. I have several of these articles that posted on Facebook. You have to know who Obama is. It, it, the Bible tells us in the last days to watch and pray and don't let anybody deceive you. So watch and pray. Uh, and, and the Bible says to watch what's going on on the planet. To uh, uh, sift between the wheat and the chaff to understand what, what's real and what's fake. Seek and you shall find, right? So that's why I'm reading these headlines and Bible scriptures together. Dr. Ben Carlson defends birthers. Here it is, uh, article posted today. Alan Combs does, does his best to twist Dr. Ben Carlson's reasonable assertion that the people have the right to know the background of the guy who's running the country. 
All right, and then people will say, well, if you don't like what Obama's doing, you're, you're race, racist. Well, that's a lie. Uh, clearly, Combs has always been a liberal operative, and how he is able to maintain a presence on Fox and is clearly uh, NBC, MSNBC material is one of the greatest mysteries. Anyway, the video opens with Combs asking Carlson if he thinks people have, have been unfair to Obama because of his race. Carson says that he doesn't see it that way, saying that people are quick to make accusations of racism in America. Carson says that we should insert some objectivity into discussion, and when uh, contentious issues arise, ask ourselves if we could have the same conflict if it were a white person in Obama's place. So Carlson is defending people to see or having the right to see Obama's records. Obama was not born in the USA, all right? He might have had, had an American mother, even possibly an American father, even though they give credit to his father being uh, from Kenya, uh, Obama's real birth daddy. Who's your daddy? Uh, could have been a guy named Frank Marshall Davis, another American, American father and American mother, but he was born in Kenya. So the fact that he is a, a Kenyan born, all right, which was actually not Kenya at the time in 61, was actually a British colony. I think it was the East Protectorate British Colony, blah, 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 right? Uh, making Obama a British citizen. Oh, which, which fulfills the, uh, the Bible prophecies of the Antichrist coming out of the old Roman Empire. So, yes, Dr. Ben Carlson is right. A black man himself uh, defends Berthers, saying we have the right to see his records. Well, ba Obama doesn't want to reveal his records. Wasn't it, uh, 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 what was the guy's name? Uh, Donald Trump the other day <clears throat> offered Obama $50 million dollars to release all his records, didn't want to do it. Fifty million bucks. What does that tell you? Oh, I love, by the way, on a side note, organ uh, 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 what do they call them here? Um, oils, right? Uh, what do they call that? Uh, the different oils. Tea tree oils, there's a different name. Organic oils, organic products. There's another name. Uh, essential oils, whatever. Oh, I tell you, if you're going to take a bath or whatever, even in the shower, buy tea tree oil from your local health food stores or whatever. Uh, put them in your bath. Uh, 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 even the parasite stuff that you take eternally to get rid of parasites, put them in your bath. Put the uh, uh, oils in your bath. Put the Epsom salts in your bath. Uh, uh, magnesium sulfates. Uh, put the, uh, like I said, tea tree oils. All the different kind of oils. Put them in your bath. It'll absorb into your system through your skin. Oh! and detoxify your body as well. And even in the shower, you'll breathe it into your lungs. I'm telling you. You don't need to go out and uh, uh, get on all these kind of antibiotics all the time. D uh, do the preventative medicine ways of uh, uh, preventive, preventative mes medicine by uh, uh, in the shower, inhaling it. Uh, all the essential oils, uh, just drop the tea tree oil and different uh, oils in the shower and as it if it heats up, it'll mist into the air, and you'll suck it into your lung. Oh, good stuff. I'm telling you. Go get it. Read it. What's good for lung, lung, lung cleanses or respiratory cleanses? Put it in the shower. It'll make the shower smell great anyways. It'll make you smell great, and it also will detox your body. Oh, love it. Here's the side note, dailycolor.com. Supreme Court protects Fox News reporter. It's about time Supreme Court won't fo won't force Fox News reporter Jenna Winter to reveal her sources, right, for her story on the Aurora Theater shooting. Well, way to go. Even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? Very good. All right. Smokers or past most smokers? Six ways to cleanse and revitalize your lungs. Oh, talking about lungs. Here's a good one right here on my Facebook from World Truth TV. Go look at that one. It's always good to increase your learning. My people uh, perish for the lack of knowledge, the Bible says. So, ah, uh, you can't say I'm not giving you the knowledge. Oh, here's another one. Healthy Mediterranean diet recipes. Ooh, I love how the Mediterranean people eat those. What I love their salads. I love their goat cheese. I love their salads. I love olives. I don't have time to read this, but if you ever want to know wonderful information. Remember uh, uh, Mr. Rogers on television for all the kids? And Captain Kangaroo? I'm not going to give you the, the kicker here, but go on my Facebook and get some information about the real, alright, uh, 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 Captain Kangaroo. 
and Ro uh, uh, Mr. Rogers. I said Roy Rogers. No, Mr. Rogers. Remember, he always wore. Why did Mr. Rogers on television with the kids always wear a sweater? If you know the answer, you well, you know, you know, you know, you knew more than I knew today. But there's a reason why Mr. Rogers, who always had his kid programs, wore a sweater. If you don't know, read it on my Facebook. All right, huh? I'm sure you can do a search on that, but. Oh, I love Rich, Rush Limbaugh's uh, uh, commentary. Most of the time, he said the Tea Party will live as long as there is a country left to stay. Say now, there's a let me just say this before that there's, there's an election coming up uh, uh, in the USA with the House and the Senate for the Congress, right? And I'm predicting uh, most likely there will be a overturn of all the freaking deaky people. Uh, a lot of them will be removed out of the Senate, hopefully, and out of the uh, uh, House. Come this November, I'm praying for that. I'm believing for that, unless it's totally uh, uh, shut down by some kind of new world order scam, anyways. But everything goes according to my plans. <laughs> there should be a clean out this uh, November here, anyways. Um, but uh, I th I've been hearing there's a lot of information coming out trying to downplay, you know, this major move uh, to clean out the the Congress this November. Uh, don't give in to that crap. Keep on praying, keep on exposing, keep on helping the right people get into uh, the Congress in the USA, right? Because what happens in the USA happens around the world. Yeah. So the Tea Party will live as long as there is a country left to save. So I agree with Rush Limbaugh. A lot of the reports I've been hearing is, oh, Tea Party will be, you know, I think the New World Order wants people to have the idea that nothing's going to happen in November, same old, same old. Don't go for that. I'm not going to believe for that. I'm going to believe for the for the best. WND.com, Obama's mixed signals causing global inst instability. Well, Obama was called into the U.S. to bring global instability, all right? So, but until the rapture happens, uh, it's not going to happen on my watch. Very interesting artic article here uh, on the Daily Mail, uh, but I can't read it right now. So if you're into Jackie Kennedy's uh, history and background information, here's a great article. Jackie Kennedy's secret lover is revealed, ooh, including affairs with... JFK's brothers, I tell you, you cannot have self-control without Jesus, all right? Even with Jesus, you need to be fasting and praying. <laughs> uh, and reading the word day in and day out. Of course, Jacqueline, Ke Jack Jacqueline Kennedy uh, couldn't keep her pants on. Of course, she's part of the New World Order system. Anyway, that's very interesting. I don't want to read it. Just give you a, a teaser right there. Here's the one, uh, here, another article about Ben Carlson as well, talking about the birthers. Good news, uh, even on CNN, which is amazing. I guess they have to report sometimes some good things. Vermont governor signs GMO labeling into law, food labeling into law, right? Uh, Vermont's governor on Thursday signed a bill into law that will require the labeling of GMO foods. Woo, genetically modified foods, hailing it as the first such law in the nation. Very good article. You need to post this and repost this. This proves that our prayers are being answered and the New World Order is being pushed back. They don't like it, but it's happening. First in the nation. Lord, let it all happen throughout the, every state and around the world. Oh, love it. Anyways, uh, here's another one. Here's, here's the original article that, I re that was mirrored on InfoWars. Inside the ring, direct out, directive outlines Obama's policy to use the military against the U.S. citizens. Can I hear an amen? Of course. That's exactly what he's been called to do. Obama is not patriotic to any country. He's a globalist. He is a poster bo boy for the new world government. And here's the one I'll read before I get into the scriptures. I'm running out of time. We'll continue this tomorrow. Here's the one about Putin and line 11. Now, uh, do I believe it? I think there is a lot of truth to this. I believe that Putin uh, doesn't care what Obama thinks. He's trying to do the right thing for his country and for the world by resisting Obama and the new world order. Yeah. There's an article by TellMeNow.com. Putin planning to release evidence exposing 9-11 as an inside job. Oh, can that be a dream come true? Uh, wouldn't that, what's that? Shaboom, shaboom. La -da 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 -da. As tensions between the U.S. is from RT, uh, I guess a video from RT here as well. As tensions between the U.S. and Russia remain at an all-time high. Thank God, by the way. 
Uh, why? Because uh, countries need to stand up against Obama. He's the Antichrist. As ten and the Vatican, by the way, as, as tensions between the U.S. and Russia remain at an all-time high, comparable to that of the Cold War, it seems that strong that strong-armed Putin has just has had just about enough of Obama's petty nuisances. Oh, that's good. Several uh, 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 analysts have recently speculated that to put Obama in his place once and for all, Putin was to set uh, was set to release evidence. Satellite imagery, example, in his position that revealed the 9-11 terror attacks as an inside job. Oh, Lord, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Oh, let it be. Oh, let it be. <laughs> so, uh, these so-called, quote, inside jobs are better known as false flag events or attacks in which uh, they were specifically and strategically designed so as to deceive the public into thinking something that isn't true. In other words, U.S. officials would plan and, exe and execute an attack on America and its people that would look as though a certain enemy entity had carried out the atrocity, right? Oh, I hope this is true. I hope this goes forward one way or another. I love it. Uh, it says here, this is only the case when America has proven interest in the homeland of, of the attributed group. What? As many have explained before from both sides of the aisle, the United States had a, hev had a heavy, heavy oil interest and it is thought to have been the motive for the false flag attacks, right? 9-11 and all the other wars, right? right? And the future wars. And the wars right now, by the way. Several documented cases have been exposed showing that this would be nothing new in the military realm of America in the pursuit of selfish interest, all right? I'm not talking about the, I'm not talking about the American people. I'm not talking even about the military. I'm talking about the hijacked government, yeah, and the governments around the world. That includes Canada, Europe, Mexico, and the nations, right? Except the ones that are not uh, uh, playing ball right now. They uh, are like... Uh, uh, balking. They are, or they are resisting right now the full weight of the New World Order. Anyways, uh, that being the case, it appears as though the rest of the world is growing tired of the impact America is having as it carries out its agenda, New World Order agenda. Yeah, America used to fight the New World Order as a whole. Uh, the majority of the government, now it's been hijacked and is now working for the New World Order. Yeah. With the Antichrist, the last empire Antichrist in the White House, Obama, yeah. In an effort to expose the government for what it is doing, killing Americans in an effort to invade elsewhere, and then killing nationals wherever they go. This is true. Some have threatened to leak military details exposing America's atrocities. Go ahead! The most recent of speculation has fallen upon Putin as he as he is said to have certain satellite images that prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that America was complicit in a false flag, flag event or attacked its own people on 9-11. Oh, goody, goody. Not goody, goody, they died. Goody, goody, this is being uncovered. Well, who, and see, the New, World, the New World Order is hoping that people will not listen to other leaders like Putin and think uh, uh, that he's a, he's, he's a communist Russian that wants to destroy America. No, the biggest communist in the world is in the White House. Yeah, it's Obama. Yeah. Supposedly demonstrating that 9-11 attacks were carried out by American officials. Well, you could imagine the repercussions. Let it hit the fan, Lord. All faith and trust in government would disintegrate, riots would break out in the streets, and perhaps a civil uprising would commence. I, I don't really care. Whatever it takes to stop the New World Order, let it happen. I'm leaving that in God's hands. That being said, imagine what America would look like upon the world stage. Most people already know this. An easy target for Muslim extremists or maybe a takeover by a foreign co a competing superpower. Now, if this does happen, uh, either way, Obama is going to set up martial law and, and, and bring in a false flag events to weaken and to uh, bring down the American people and the people on the planet. So uh, there are probably a number of scenarios the New World Order is working on, the Bilderberg meetings, etc., etc. Okay, if the people find out... We're going to do this, anyways. Uh, if 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 they don't find out, we're still going to do this <laughs> and blame it on someone else. All right. So it's going to hit the fan, anyways, uh, by Obama in the USA and around the world. It's just a matter of when. All right. And so 
I, I really don't care how it hits the fan as long as people break free from the zombie New World Order deception and get born again in spirit filled. I don't care what happens. Although these scenarios may be stretched, you can see how other forces could easily take advantage of this. Such a, such a situation. What uh, it says? What, what do people think? Could Putin have such evidence in, in his possession? Of course he does. Could this be why Obama has gone so soft on Putin throughout the last month? Perhaps he was blackmailed. Of course, I think he was 100%. I think the New World Order knows that Putin is a, a threat. So is China, so is Venezuela, so is Syria, so is Iran. Not because they're going to blow up the nations. It's because they're going to expose the corruption in the New World Order by these hijacked governments, 100%. Okay, speaking about that, you cannot uh, leave out the scriptures. I'm going to read one psalm here to remind us who's in control and how that, no matter how many wicked things are going on on the planet, you and I, being born again spirit-filled, have the power on the planet. Obama doesn't have it. Biden the goofball doesn't have it, all right? Hillary doesn't have it. Will Hillary get into power? She's been paid off to stay on the payroll and, and to do whatever the New World Order wants her to do. Whether she, she's put in the presidency, uh, Obama may just uh, uh, be elevated to a world chancellor position. Uh, Hillary may be brought into a lower position as a president, of course, but Obama is the one world ruler. So either he'll stay as the president of the U.S. as the world ruler, or he'll be elevated uh, uh, outside the U.S. presidency and someone else like a Hillary brought in. Uh, while he uh, uh, is elevated to a world chancellor, one world government leader. Of course, Obama is not going anywhere. He's not being demoted. Obama will be promoted over the nations even more as the days go on. Yeah. But don't forget, Psalm 145, woohoo, is our power for the hour. Psalm of praise of David and should be our praise every day. So if you want to know why I'm happy, even though I know who Obama is, the Antichrist in the White House, what the New World Order is doing, 9-11 was an inside job, uh, Obama's birth records <laughs> are fake, shall I go on, GMO is crap, all right, chemtrails, evil fluoride is being put in the water. There are breakthroughs, and the only reason breakthroughs are coming is because people like you and me are actually standing in faith by the word, like, like for instance, this chapter, Psalm 145. Let's read this quickly. A psalm of praise of David. If anybody knew about fighting the New World Order, it was David. David fought the New World Order. Saul was a knucklehead. The Philistines were alive. The New World Order was, was present, uh, present in Israel. Run it, ran the government of Israel through Saul and ran the Philistines. So David knew how to deal with the New World Order. How did he deal with it? And how should we deal with it? It's right here. I will exalt you, my God. Woo, my God. Not my, uh, not my horse. Not my sword. Uh, not my power. I will exalt you, O oh God, my God. My King Jesus. And praise your name forever and ever. He understood where real power came from. That's why David had the victory with the New World Order back then. And we have it now. I will praise you every day. Yes, I'll praise you forever. You want to see more miracles? Stop complaining. Stop praising God. Don't stop, stop complaining how much money you don't have, what the negative things in your life are. Stop praising God for the things that, that the Bible says are yours. Thank God for His promises over your life. Walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. <clears throat> great is the Lord. Not great is Obama. Thank God. God is most, most worthy of praise. No one can measure His greatness. Oh, Lord. Let's, let each generation tell its children on, on, on a live stream, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. Let each generation tell its children and the people of your mighty acts. Obama knows this. New World Order knows this. The Bilderbergers know that. They all know this. Let all people proclaim your power. All real power comes from Jesus. David said, I'll think about this all the time. I'll meditate on your God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Father, your majestic glorious splendor and your wonderful miracle. So I told you, the only thing holding back of the New World Order now is you and me, and people like us that are born again, spiritual on the earth. That's the only people. God's awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue and should be on every tongue. David said, I'll proclaim your greatness. I'm telling you, even though we're exposing the New World Order, we got to remind people where the power comes from. 
doesn't come from the fallen angel Lucifer. doesn't come from the New World Order. doesn't come from the music or, or, or film industry. doesn't come from our, our jobs or, or living in a certain country. It comes from God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. I'll proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful, of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness, your doing right, past, present, and future. My God. And righteousness of Jesus that is brought into our lives. Our sins are washed away so we can be right. That's actually the foundation of our lives. If our sins aren't washed away, if we're not made right by Jesus' blood, uh, then our prayers won't be answered and we'll have no power. Oh, that's right, yeah. The Lord Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. Whoa, unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. Remember I told you the Lord's good to everyone? What, the sinners? Even Brad Pitt? Yes. Doesn't mean they're going to heaven until they repent. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. There you go. This is what I was saying earlier. All of your works will thank you, Lord, and your faithful followers will praise you. Oh, Lord! All your works will thank you. I'm telling you. Stop griping and start thanking God. I'm telling you, not for crap, for his goodness. Lord, it's the best day we've ever had yet in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day of miracles. Yeah, I'm telling you, you want to see miracles, do that. <clears throat> All right, it says here, all your works will thank you, not complain. Verse 11, they will speak of the glory of the goodness of your kingdom. His kingdom reigns. Obama does not reign. That's why the rapture has to happen before Obama really takes control of the planet. They will give examples of your power. Ooh, Lord. Couldn't take over Adam and even the garden, could you, devil? Couldn't take down Noah, could you, devil? Couldn't take down Jesus. <sighs> Can't take down us. They will tell about your mighty deeds and about your majesty and glory of your reign. God reigns. Obama doesn't reign. The New World Order knows this. The fallen angel Lucifer knows this. He, he just doesn't want you to know this, or me. <clears throat> Verse 13. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your, you rule throughout all generations. Who rules? The New World Order, the Bilderberg CFR. They think they rule. They don't rule crap. The Lord will always, the Lord always keeps his promises. That's why it's so important for you and I to constantly read the Bible, the scriptures, understand what God's promised to us. Because he always keeps his promises. He is good, gracious in all that he does. The Lord helps the fallen. I tell you, you feel like you're falling down, can't get up. The Bible says that God helps you. Don't listen to the devil's lies. He lifts those, those up bent beneath their loads. You feel like the whole world's on your shoulders? Give it to Jesus. The eyes of all look to you, God, Jesus, in hope. You give them their food as they need it. Ah, who, who helps you in your finances? Jesus. That's what you got to say. you got to go through this uh, uh, Psalm, Psalm 145, and thank God for all these promises. Oh, Lord, thank you. Help me. You lift me up, oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You lift up my, off every heavy load out of my life, Lord, from verse 14. 15, Lord, we look to you, you're our hope, not Obama, hallelujah. You give us food, hallelujah. you got to talk like that. Huh? If you, listen, the Bible says, I was thinking about this the other day, two days ago. Uh, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved or delivered, right? It's not just talking about your sins washed away. It's talking about whosoever shall call upon the name of the word or these verses shall be, de shall be saved or delivered. So the name of the Lord is his word. So if you call upon this verse, if you say, if you speak this verse and you call upon the name of this verse, which is the Lord, you shall be delivered. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. This, the name of the Lord is this verse. The name of the Lord is all these verses. So don't just put God in a box or the scriptures in a box. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved or delivered or helped. Whosoever shall call upon the name of this verse shall be helped. So if you don't know these verses, and you don't you don't call out these verses, and thank God that these verses coming to pass in your life now, you're not going to be you're not going to be delivered, you're not going to be saved from your from your attacks. No way. The eyes look to you; you give them their food. Ooh, when you open your hand, you satisfy the hungry, 
and the thirst of every living thing. Every living thing. Animals, the saved and the unsaved. People turn to the Lord because of the goodness of God. All right? You don't need people to be stricken with the disease or, or burnt half to death or hit by a tornado to turn to God. The goodness of God leads people to repentance. My God. Remember the uh, uh, prodigal son came back and the Lord just heaped robes on him, food on him, uh, clothes and, and a ring and love. And the guy just melted. Now the world, all right, the, the, the cords of sin <laughs> are, are, are terrible. You don't need God to judge you. Your sins will judge you. Oh! You open your hand, which is the Holy Spirit. You satisfy you. Everybody from hunger and thirst. The Lord is right in everything he does. Unlike what the devil tells about God. He, God is filled with kindness. The Lord is close to all who call upon him. Remember I told you that people have relationships with, with God? Well, sometimes it's a close relationship and sometimes it's a, it's a far relationship because uh, they refuse to get the blood upon them. They refuse to talk to God or spend time with God or obey God. But the Lord is close to all who call upon him. Yes. To all who call upon him in the truth, he grants the desires. He Did you say just the needs? No, God grants the desires of those who fear him. God even does more than supply your needs. He'll give you the desires of your heart. I don't care what anybody says. It's what the Bible says. What even my desires? Yeah. He didn't say your lusts. He said the good desires that you have. He grants the desires of those that fear him. Walk with God under his blood. Stay in the Holy Spirit. He'll give you the desires of your heart. He hears their cries for help and rescues them. My God, even to those that are unsaved. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because of our prayers, praying for the world to be saved, God will help the sinners, of course. The Lord protects all those who love Him. See, there's, there's special benefits for us that uh, to love him is to keep his commandments, right? To love him is to accept him. To love him is to uh, 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 obey his scriptures, do what he says, be born again, spirit filled, all of that, yeah. There's special protection to all those who love him. But he destroys the wicked, all right? So if you think you can live on the planet and just be wicked all the time and ignore him, uh-oh, you're screwed. Verse 21, and then we'll pray. Last verse, I will praise the Lord Jesus the Father and the Holy Spirit and His Word, I will praise it. I will lift it up. And may everyone on earth bless Jesus' holy name forever and ever. Bless His holy name. Who's that name? That's Jesus. I will praise Jesus and may everyone on earth, whoa, bless His, Jesus' holy name forever and ever. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, let's pray. Father, ha, 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 ha. Thank you for Psalm 145. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we have this technology to uh, uh, Bible technology and, and Internet and all these things you've given us because you know the time is short. We need this technology uh, because you're coming back very soon. So we thank you that, number one, we get to live in, the, in, in 2014 and beyond. We thank you that we have this technology. We praise you, as David said. Lord, in the midst of the New World Order system that is raising up its ugly head around the world, we thank you that you are striking down your enemies. Glory to God, here in the USA and around the world, exposing the, the evil, bringing down the evil, lifting up the people from the heavy burdens. Lord, we thank you that you rule. You rule in all the nations. And like David, we just want to praise you and thank you for all that you have done, that you are doing, and that you're going to do, Lord. You rule, and we thank you that we're part of your kingdom, that you've translated us out of the kingdom of darkness, out of the kingdom of the new world order. The Bible says, and tr has translated us into the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus. By his name, by your spirit. Thank you, Lord. We have a, we have a, a different king than the earthly kings. You are our king. You are our ruler. You are our mighty God. And we declare your wonderful, glorious works on the earth every day. Thank you, Lord, for the breath in our lungs, for the heart, our hearts beating for another day of opportunity. Help us to endure to the end and, and run the race and not give up, Lord. We love you. What a privilege, 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 privilege it is to be alive in these last days.
Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, by your Spirit, amen. I love you. I've held you long enough. All right. Sonia's in the house. And uh, everybody else in the house right here, I love you. Never, Connie Barlow, Sean Brett, never, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never get tired of the Word of God. All right? Don't just uh, get information about what's going on around the world and then turn off the Scriptures. Always, always, always have a love and a discipline for the Scriptures. It, it, even if you get tired. No, nope, I'm going to read the Bible no matter what. If I'm going to do one thing today, it's going to be pray and it's going to be get in the Word of God. Hallelujah. All right? And have that. I don't care if it's your holidays. I don't care if it's during the week every day. I don't care if it's, the, if it's the weekend. If you will stay in the Word, in the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, pray in day in, day out, have a constant uh, a relationship like this, I'm telling you, you will get stronger and stronger. While the world gets weaker and weaker, you get stronger and stronger. You will grow brighter and brighter. It takes a life of power, love, and a sound mind, self-discipline. So if you determine to do this, and put a, and, and I know we get tired. I know there there is stress on on the planet, but there's no way to rejuvenate. There's no way to get the more power by focusing on the on the negative. We we understand what's going on. We 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 reveal what's going on. We expose what's going on. But the strength doesn't come from that. The strength comes from spending time in the presence, in the in the lap of Jesus. In the power of, of, of the Holy Spirit, of the Spirit, and the, in the presence of the Bible Scriptures. That's how we, re, we renew our strength. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. That means to hug the Bible, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and His Word day in and day out. That's the only way to have strength in these last days. Otherwise, you'll find yourself like a roller coaster or without strength, even if you know what the truth is. Truth uh, uh, and facts is great out there. But we need it inside ourselves by the power of the Holy Spirit, by feeding the fires of God. Hallelujah, the Holy Spirit, by feeding our relationship, drawing near to God, spending time at least a half an hour to an hour every day in prayer with the Lord. And in the scriptures, listening, meditating on the word of God and speaking out the promises of God. That's how you strengthen yourself. And then everything else will just fall in place. We'll, we'll come, uh, Jesus said, you know, if, seek first Him and doing this, doing this stuff and all things will be added. And people get it backwards and they, or they forget it or they ignore it and they wonder why that even though they accept, they, they may have accepted Jesus, got born again and, and have been spirit filled, being spirit filled is not a one time event, it's a, it's a daily event. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is a daily event. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll continue off. We left up today. There are lost in life signing off. Boom! I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. I'll see you on Facebook and I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same channel. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Throughout its history, in both the pre-Soviet and Soviet eras, Russia had been ruled by powerful leaders who established strong cults of personality that helped them to retain power. With the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, a democratic government was established, the first time full democracy had been implemented in Russia. With the new government, there was a hope of a new kind of leadership but the majority of the last 20 years have once again been dominated by the leadership of a single man, Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin spent the early years of his career in the KGB, the Soviet Security Agency. After the fall of the Soviet Union, he worked in the Yeltsin administration and was appointed President of Russia by Yeltsin when Yeltsin resigned in 1999. Putin has remained in either the presidency or the prime ministership since then. Although his rise to the presidency was unusual and unexpected, Putin quickly gained support from the nation after the way he dealt with Chechnya, a war-torn region in southwestern Russia. Putin quickly established himself as a powerful and decisive ruler. He passed many laws in the first few months of his presidency. He restructured many parts of the government to resemble how it had been in the Tsarist era and dismissed many government officials. The weak post-Soviet Russian military was also built up during Putin's first presidency, and the country experienced economic growth, but also accumulated a large national debt. During his time in power, Putin has developed his cult of personality by participating in numerous publicity stunts, from hunting tigers and horseback riding shirtless, 
to guiding flocks of migratory geese and bottle feeding baby elk. Although the Russian nation has adopted democracy since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Putin's administration is another iteration of authoritarian rule as has been seen throughout Russia's history. Three people died and more than 170 were injured in the Boston Marathon bombings. One irony is that a dozen of them are currently being treated in the same hospital as Joka Sanov. And after two successive nights of sirens and gunfire, people in this iconic American city will simply be relieved that their long ordeal has finally come to an end. David Willis OK, let's have a look at the latest pictures which have come in of the suspects at Monday's Boston Marathon. These photographs taken by a spectator, Bob Leonard, shortly before the bombs went off. You can see there the two suspects, Tamaran Saniev and his brother Jokar, with spectators near the finishing line. Not long after, the two devices exploded, killing three people, including an eight-year-old boy and wounding more than 170 other people. Well, the background of the two suspects will now be looked at in detail as the police try to piece together a motive for the attacks. The brothers had lived in the United States for more than a decade. They are ethnic Chechens from the troubled Caucasus region of southern Russia. The spokesperson for the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, had this to say just a short time ago. The president is following the situation in Boston. There is much contradictory information. According to the information, on the one hand, they are citizens of the Russian Federation, as their citizenship was reinstated. They arrived in the Russian Federation from Kyrgyzstan. For some time they studied in Dagestan at school. There's an assumption they arrived in the USA from Turkey with Turkish passports. According to the brother's uncle, they arrived in the USA after they received political asylum. Putin, in his message to President Obama, expresses condolence and expressed readiness to give all possible assistance in investigating the Boston Terrorist Act. I think that contacts will be conducted between our intelligence services. Well, let's get more on that aspect of this story, the reaction to the bombings in Boston. Joining us now is Natalia Tvozovskaya from the BBC's Russian service. What's your reading of those comments from the Kremlin? Uh, from the Kremlin, what well, is interesting that, that Vladimir Putin, Russia, Russia's president, straight away offered this help and assistance in possible investigation right after the, uh, the explosion in Boston happened. And this is something quite unusual because usually you would expect um, just the expression of condolences, but this time the help was offered straight away. Okay. What are people saying to your service? What are people saying to your website, the BBC's Russian website? Um, there's been a tremendously emotional reaction, but the very first uh, expression was actually disbelief. Uh, like, for instance, Gazimur from Tatarstan uh, is saying, let's not rush to a conclusion until we get confirmed facts. Let's wait and see what uh, FBI says. Uh, and there were more questions asked uh, from people writing to our sites, like uh, Dima Danskoy saying, why, when, who, who's going to contribute from, uh, from it? Let's think how we should avoid this uh, event happening in every country. And then some particular comments about Chechens as well. Why do the Chechens need that? Uh, that's Alexander from Rostov uh, on Don asking. They're very cautious usually, and they're not uh, religious fanatics. So maybe it's not the Russian Chechens involved. Um, so uh, there's quite a lot of disbelief and uh, questions, really. If one had watched the American news channels over the past three or four days, as soon as uh, these two young men, as soon as their lineage came out, the Chechen element, the ingredient to this, there was this rush almost, there was this feeling, this undertow of, ah, they're foreigners, ah, there may be, they may be Muslims along that that was the feeling that one was getting but that's too simple surely just just to frame it in those terms absolutely and that's that's what the russian readers uh, russian speaking readers have been saying uh, uh they uh, they keep asking questions they keep raising them saying like perhaps there's some a wider international extremist group behind it let's not just look at it with with the russian 
Russian Chechens. Uh, and also, there's quite a wave of conspiracy theory comments on our website that we get as well. Like, for instance, Igor from Iwana was saying, the boys may not have been aware of what they were doing. Perhaps they were paid by the organizers just to carry the bags and put them in a certain place. I doubt they make bombs. That requires a different level of skills. Um, and also there were more uh, straightforward suggestions, if you like. Um, uh, uh, a lady called Lou was saying, the political affair doesn't have much with robbing a shop. Uh, and the, their father, the, the father of the boys, um, was saying that the whole thing was set up. So perhaps we should be looking for more links with Lubyanka here. So there have been even, you know, speculation from the Russian readers that there have been Russian secret services involved in this case. Allegations, investigation and speculation. We've got a long process to go through now, of course. Natalia, many thanks. We'll be talking live with our correspondent in Boston, David Willis, just a little later here on BBC World News. Do stay with us. My dog doesn't like it when I kiss you. What are you doing, buddy? Oh, yeah. Who's your favorite? I am. Who do you love the most? You, I, you love me the most. <laughs> My dog just says, hey, not kissing. Okay, no fighting. All right. Little cat blue. Technically blue, but... Everybody calls him Boo Boo, Boo Boo. And my dog in the background there barking is Angel. What an angel. But she is a noser. She is a border collie. And she is uh, watches everything. I always say to her, why are you always watching me? Why do you watch everything? That's what they do. They watch everything. You know, I heard it sometimes. And I do believe this. Most people get pets and animals that... Uh, that uh, uh, Take after uh, the owners, all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they even look like the owners. I'm constantly watching everything, all right? And I'm constantly running and, and herding, right? People <laughs> and, and helping people to go in the right direction, keeping demons away. That's exactly what my dog does. <laughs> so the cat and watches everything. She, she has to see everything, watch everything, control everything. Takes after moi. Anyways, oh, so good to be alive. Okay, hey, chat rooms are open here at livestream.com every day, Monday through Friday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm on here, Daryl Lawson Live, and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. So if you forget all that, just go to DarylLawsonLive.com. Oh, boom, boom. Get all the links, the Facebook uh, links, the Twitter links. Of course, live streams on there. YouTube videos, nearly 700 of them. Uh, 700 almost videos that I've done that are on there. If you didn't watch yesterday's video, I went through, of course, the headlines and some, uh, actually a lot of scriptures. Uh, we talked about the Tulsa police captain, right, being demoted because he wouldn't go to the Islamic party. All right, so he didn't want to go over there. Anyways, that was from Tulsa, Mr. Field. So if you, if you missed that, I'm telling you, there's always these golden nuggets that I give you every day that will help you piece together the puzzle of life. Whoa! Speaking about life, did you see Brad Pitt is in the news? Somebody uh, smacked him in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His wife, Angelina Jolie, and him were in L.A. I think it was yesterday for the uh, screening of her new movie, right? Mal 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 Maleficent. Maleficent. There you go. Boom, boom. Anyway, some kind of weird... Uh, All right, there was a lot coming to you. Oh, it's from Southern California. Today is, well, end of May here. What, one more day left? May 29th, 2014, just after 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Be a beautiful, oh, Thursday afternoon here. Love to be, I love to be alive. Just listening to some Christmas carols. Can you believe it? Oh, why wait till December to thank you, Jesus, right? <laughs>
Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I know he probably wasn't most likely 99.9% uh, born in December, but uh-oh, the fact of the matter is he was born. Hallelujah! Ha the, the devil hates that, right? The devil... Uh, oh, my cat goes, hey, man, my cat loves when I start doing the program here every day because he knows I'm going to open up the windows wide and the birds are going to be chirping <laughs> and I can't grab him and pull his tail and say, I love you. <laughs> he knows I have to sit in his chair, right? <laughs> Unless he comes too close and I'll pick him up and kiss him on the nose. But anyways, oh, love to be alive. Southern California, it's about probably, what, 75-ish. Like I said, all year round, uh, the, the average temperature here in Southern California is about 75. No humidity, gentle breeze, oh, no bugs. There is no bugs in Southern California. Maybe if you dig in the dirt, there's worms. But you'll be, you can sit and lie in the backyard in your hammock, sit in the chair out here, and you'll probably never see a fly, all right? And so, whoa, mosquitoes. I haven't been bit, you know, bit by a mosquito uh, I can't even remember. It's been years and years and years and years and years and years. Mosquito, what is a mosquito? All right. <laughs> uh, unlike years past. Well, you can go into the mountains, right? You can just travel up about an hour away in the mountains here, which is still part of California. And then you can get bit, bit by a mosquito if you, uh, if you miss that. <laughs> but not here in Southern California. There are no mosquitoes in the area here. I think I saw one that escaped from Alcatraz or somewhere. But anyways, it was... Uh, uh, floating somewhere, and I whack killed. That was probably about five years ago. So he somehow escaped the mountains and came down to the coast, and he got killed. What a sucker! Well, technically they are suckers, right? Blood suckers. <laughs> oh, perfect! Oh, I got him! I caught myself! I caught myself! I caught myself a cat! Oh, didn't think I could get. The atheist, you don't have to join Scientology. Oh, hallelujah, I'm telling you. There is nothing like the freedom that you have in Jesus. Oh, Lord, you have to know that the price has already been paid. Yeah, for your sins. Oh, for all sickness and disease. Yeah, for your passageway to heaven. For your peace, your joy, your health, your prosperity. It's been paid. It's been paid by Jesus, all right? So uh, his blood paid for it. So I'm just here on the earth to spread the blood around, right? Spread the love, the blood, the love of the blood around, right? The Bible actually says to have faith in the blood of Jesus. And uh, one of these days, I may just go through the book of Hebrews again. Uh, I love the book of Hebrews. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible and just hammers the blood of Jesus in the face of sickness, disease, every curse, the devil, the new world order. You can't really fight the new world order unless you have Jesus, all right? <laughs> Can I say that again? Can I get an amen? You can't really, truly, fully, uh, uh, effectively fight the new world order, all right, or, or evil, or the dark side, whatever you want to label it. Deception, corruption, you cannot fight corruption or darkness without the light. Oh, how can you fight darkness without the light? So, uh, for everybody out there that, uh, you know, has found out about 9-11 was an inside job, found out about who Obama really is, the New World Order, how the GMOs are killing people, uh, etc., etc., etc. For everybody that has found out about the deceptions on the planet, Go the extra step and get born again in spirit field. Ooh, boom, uh, yeah, because you cannot be effective and you cannot stay undeceived. Is that a word? You cannot, you cannot stay untainted. You cannot, you cannot be effective or powerful without the light. And Jesus is the light. Oh, the Father, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit, and His Word. You and I and people cannot be effective on this planet, pushing back the darkness, unless we have the lights. Oh, yay! I mean, otherwise it's just a bunch of facts, and it's just a bunch of uh, information. The true warriors of darkness on this planet for the last 6,000 years are every uh, are all the people uh, that have loved Jesus since the Garden of Eden. Oh, 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 oh. 
uh, 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 when the New World Order came into the Garden of Eden, and uh, and and the media, the media, did you know that? Did you know? Did you know that the media was in? Right, the New World Order media was in the Garden of Eden. Of course, they were screwing up the uh, uh, broadcast, <laughs> just like today, the media broadcast. Oh no, no, no. God d didn't really say that you shouldn't eat of that fruit tree. No, no, no. Let me just tell you what he really said. Oh, 6,000 years later, it's the same uh, 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 operation, right? It's the, it's the new world order. It's the, it's, the, it's the dark side, all right? Through media, through, through organizations and banks and religions, blah, blah, blah. Still telling people. The wrong information about God. <laughs> because they get off the scriptures, right? They get out of the light. And if people get out of the light, you can't fight darkness with darkness. Oh, that's a heavy revy right there. You cannot fight darkness with darkness. No. The only effective way to fight darkness is not to join darkness, is not to... Uh, uh, even expose darkness. That's darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. And that's part of what we should do. But light can really only do that. Light can only push it back. Light can really only expose darkness fully anyway. So for people that are waking up to the deceptions on the planet, wake up all the way. Hallelujah. Arise and shine. Wake up. Be the child of the light by accepting Jesus as your Mighty God, as your mighty Savior, Jesus, forgive my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Something like that. A easy, easy, easy. A easy, right? <laughs> it's the way to do it. And this is the way that when the forces of darkness. I mean, a lot of people try to fight the New World Order, try to fight darkness by doing, you know, uh, little things against them. Well, the forces of darkness will just come knocking on your door and beat your brains in, all right? If you do not have the protection of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bottom line, there's there's always repercussions when you go against the forces of darkness. A lot of people aren't born again, and they are coming against the New World Order, and they're going to die, all right? And they're going to get their brains bashed in. And they are, are going to find out the backlash will destroy them, uh, hurt them. And, and if they don't get to Jesus quickly for his protection, they are doomed, all right? So, you know... Vampire-like movie, uh, magical, weird, actually demonic, to be honest with you. Uh, I like sci-fi, but I understand uh, the things of the spiritual realm, so I don't get sucked into it, right? So, you know, uh, a lot of the movies are, are, are the sci-fi movies out there are... What's that one coming out tomorrow? I think, I think uh, um, speaking about Scientology yesterday, Scientology, uh, Tom Cruise, right? He's got a movie coming out, I think it's The Edge of Tomorrow. It's coming out, I think, tomorrow. <laughs> so May 29, 2014, I think it comes out tomorrow in the theaters. Anyway, it's about him saving the world again, you know, through technology. And uh, yesterday, uh, I was talking about Scientology a little bit. And I was thinking about him today again in Scientology. Is that people join Scientology because they want to save mankind through scientific technology? Oh, well, uh, mankind has been saved through Jesus, all right? <laughs> so you don't have to go do something that's already been done. So note to Tom Cruise, all right? <laughs> note to Angelina Jolie. Note to Brad Pitt. The world has already been saved. It's not going to be saved through the United Nations. The world is not going to be saved through NATO or through, or through Obama, abomination. Oh, God help us all. And I'll read some of the headlines today about abomination and how we screwed up the planet. Anyways, uh, the world has already been saved through Jesus. Oh, read it, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every sickness and disease has already been cured. Yeah, did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> All sins have been taken care of. You don't have to light candles. You don't have to give fruit baskets in the front of little statues. You don't have to pray to Mary. I was going to call her Virgin Mary, but Mary's not a virgin anymore, all right? <laughs> all right, I mean, I, I think we learned that in biology, but anyways, or sex education in school. Anyway, so, no, Mary is no longer a virgin, uh, uh, physically anyways. <laughs> She had several kids after Jesus, by the way, and she had normal uh, relationship, uh, marriage relationship with her hubby, all right? You go, Mary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I, won't want, I don't want to get in trouble for that, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So, 
uh, uh, Mary, yeah. Mary, did you know? <laughs> Whoa! Anyway, so, yeah, the world's been saved uh, 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 from its sins. Glory to God! You don't have to pray to Mary. You don't have to light candles. Not that that did anything in the past. Anyways, you don't have to join the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Jewish synagogues. You don't have to join any church or religion or organization, the Mormons, the Catholics, 